It was springtime on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. All the engines loved this time of the year. Emily thought the island had never looked more beautiful. But that night, there was a big and blustery storm. High winds swept across the island. Trees were blown down. A water tower fell over. And the roof blew right off Farmer McColl's barn. Emily was very pleased to be safe and warm in her cosy shed. She could hear the wind outside. But the next morning, Emily could not believe her eyes. The storm had made a terrible mess. Farmer McCall was looking at the damaged barn. The baby calves will be cold at night. I must fix the roof right away. But Farmer McCall didn't have any timber for the roof. So he telephoned a fat controller. The fat controller came to see Emily. The storm blew the roof off Farmer McCall's barn, he said. You must take some timber so it can be fixed. Yes, sir said Emily. Emily steamed over to the timber yards. She buffered up to the timber wagon and raced off to Farmer McCall's as fast as she could. But the storm had caused lots of damage to the lines. Workmen and lorries were clearing branches and rocks from the tracks. Emily wanted to go quickly, but she couldn't go at all. Bother, said Emily crossly. Trevor and the workmen were trying to move the tree, but moving it was taking a long time. Hurry up, Emily puffed impatiently. You must work harder. And she blew her whistle. <whistles> Trevor was working as hard as he could. At last, he pulled the tree off the track. But Emily didn't say thank you to Trevor. All she said was, About time. Every time she came across workmen clearing the track, she blew her whistle and whished steam. This made the workmen cross. But Emily thought it made them work harder. Then Emily came across a fallen water tower. It had crashed onto her line. Oh, no, she cried. Elizabeth was helping the workmen push the tower off the track. The tower was very heavy. Emily decided to boss Elizabeth too. Hurry up, she wished. And she blew her whistle as loud as she could. Not if you ask like that, sniffed Elizabeth crossly. I've got an urgent delivery, said Emily. But Elizabeth didn't listen. She simply went back to work. Emily blew her whistle again, but the more she blew her whistle, the slower Elizabeth seemed to go. Emily thought she would never get to Farmer McCall's. The skies were darkening and night was on its way. Thomas arrived bringing more supplies. Hello, Thomas tooted. Emily complained about Elizabeth. She won't do a thing I tell her. That's because you're a big bossy boiler, laughed Thomas. You should try asking nicely for a change. 
Emily didn't like being called the bossy boiler, and she didn't want to ask nicely. But it would be night time soon, and the baby calf still didn't have a roof over their heads. So Emily took a deep breath. I'm sorry I was rude, but can you help me get this timber to Farmer McCall's? Please, it's to help the baby calves. Elizabeth smiled. Why, certainly, she puffed. I'll get your track cleared in no time. Emily was surprised. Thomas was right. Asking nicely was just like magic. Elizabeth pushed with all her puff. The tower was heavy, but with a mighty heave, the track was clear. Thank you, cried Emily, and she steamed on as fast as she could. It was nearly bedtime. Emily knew the baby calves would be getting cold. So whenever there was something on the track, she took a deep breath and said, please and thank you. At last, Emily arrived at Farmer McCall's. And the timber was quickly unloaded. The barn was soon repaired and the baby calves snuggled down on a nice soft hay. Thank you, Emily, said Farmer McCall. The calves will be nice and warm now. Emily was pleased. She'd arrived on time. Asking nicely was all she'd had to do. <laughs> <laughs>